Year 10 and 11, welcome to your quick revision on the character of Fred in A Christmas Carol in preparation for your English Literature exam. First of all then, antithesis. Fred is the antithesis or the foil to Scrooge as he is the direct opposite. He is Scrooge's nephew and his only living family. He's the son of Fan. Um, Scrooge's sister. He is never bothered by Scrooge's negativity or the fact that he's miserable. Metaphorically, he stands to represent how we should behave towards each other. In the novella, he visits Scrooge in his office to wish him a Merry Christmas. He holds a family Christmas party where he refuses to be rude about Scrooge, although he does laugh at Scrooge's behaviour. He's kind to Bob, expressing his sorrow for the death of Tiny Tim. Welcomes Scrooge into the family uh, into the, the family Christmas scene at the end without any question. Um, introduction to Fred then. Quotation. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you, cried a cheerful voice. Again, we can clearly see the antithesis to Scrooge here by the adjective cheerful. And you probably might want to analyse that if you've got a question about Fred. Um, so obviously the adjective cheerful is the direct opposite of what we get in Scrooge in, in Steve 1, where Scrooge, we keep, we're, we're told he's solitary, he's miserable, <clears throat> he's alone. And also another instance of antithesis in terms of Scrooge versus Fred, we've got this. He had so heated himself with rapid walking in the fog and frost, this nephew of Scrooge's, that he was all in a glow. Now, physically and metaphorically, Fred is presented as warm if you look at the word glow. And then if you also look at heated himself <clears throat> and... Sorry, excuse me. He's the opposite to Scrooge because Scrooge is presented as cold. And the pathetic fallacy in Steve 1 that is associated with Scrooge is also always talking about um, frost um, and the temperature and how low his temperature is. And we get the frosty rime on his head. We get he carries his low temperature about with him. So um, through that alone, we once again have this, uh, this foil um, in terms of Fred and Scrooge. They are opposites to one another. And don't forget, throughout the novella, Fred will be the symbol of good, the metaphorical symbol of good. He is also, interestingly, though, the mouthpiece for Dickens's own views. Um, quote, a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. Again, if you analyse in language, we can see that he's persistent in his positivity regarding Christmas. If you look, you've got the adjective good, you've got the adjective kind, you've got the adjective forgiving, You've got the adjective charitable and you've got the adjective pleasant. You could potentially analyse them all individually. And obviously charitable here is an interesting word because remember Dickens, one of Dickens's purposes in the whole novella is that he wanted the richer members of society to be more generous to the poor, to the less fortunate. So we get that there in the adjective charitable. Also, in terms of mouthpiece for Dickens' views, we've got forgiving that we should um, we should be able, I suppose, to be forgiving towards one another, especially at Christmas time when this is the the time we spend with our families, the, our loved ones, a moment to be cherished, if you like. Um, we also get this, and again, I don't expect you to remember every quotation, but just to look at. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then, returned the nephew gaily. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Scrooge, having no better answer ready on the spur of the moment, said, Bah, again, and followed it up with humbug. Don't be cross, uncle, said the nephew. So again, if we're looking at this exchange in terms of the character of Fred, um, we've got returned the nephew gaily. Look at your adverb gaily. Again, it's this idea that he's he's consistently upbeat. He's consistently positive. Um, he's always... um in an optimistic frame of mind. Uh, again, opposite to Scrooge there, I suppose, when he says, oh, you're poor enough. And then the fact that Fred is willing to question, what right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. And, and I suppose that, that sets up this, um, the superficiality of having a lot of money. It doesn't actually lead to happiness, does it? Especially in the instance of Scrooge. Um, and then again, at the end there, he says to Scrooge that he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be angry, he shouldn't be cross. Okay. Um, again, as well, the mouthpiece for Dickens' views, there's a simple message, isn't there? It is better to be rich in relationships and, and in love and in affection than it is, than it is to be financially rich. And I suppose he, he really does emphasise that with Scrooge and how alone 
and solitary Scrooge is, even though he may be rich. Um, I've got this huge quote again. I don't expect you to remember it, but there's bits we can analyse. So we've got this. There are many things from which I might have derived good, by which I have not profited. I dare say, returned the nephew, Christmas among the rest. But I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time when it has come round, apart from the veneration due to its sacred name and origin, if anything belonging to it can be apart from that as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely and to think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave and not another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And therefore, uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Now, the bit in white I've kind of outlined, if you like. So look what Fred is saying, that he has never profited from Christmas. And again, this is in terms of finance. But what he does say is that he has profited in other ways because of uh, of how um, good Christmas is and how positive it is and how it can bring people together. And he mentions that when he says, when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely and to think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave. Or we have this, this message of equality as well, I suppose, don't we? The fact that regardless if someone is below you in terms of the class system, um, that we should look at each other as equals. We should act as if we are equal. We have a message of social responsibility here from Dickens through Fred. Um, whilst Fred's basic message is, I suppose, how good and positive Christmas is, this this um, more subtle message that Dickens is portraying is socialism, equality, equality for the classes. Um, I suppose arguably and um arguably Dickens is is suggesting that capitalism is um detrimental to society. And then obviously we get the end, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has, look, it's in italics, done me good and will in italics do me good. So we've got the past. Isn't this interesting that in italics we have the past, that it has done me good and the future it will do me, me good. That's not an accident. It's almost a reference to the ghosts, isn't it, as well, of what, what, what Scrooge is going to see in the visions. Um, Fred, as we know, is positive and kind. Just a couple of quotations there. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Cannot we, Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon, said Scrooge. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. We have never had any quarrel to which I have been a party, but I have made the trial in homage to Christmas and I'll keep my Christmas humour to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Um, so actually, again, interestingly, here Fred is saying, why can't, he asks the question again, well, why can't we be friends? He's asked Scrooge quite a few questions that we, as a reader, well, we wonder what the what the answer is and we never quite get the answer because Scrooge is very dismissive, isn't he? Good afternoon. Um. And I suppose we wonder, well, why can't they be friends? And when we look at Scrooge's past, when we get the ghost of Christmas past, we realise that he does have potential to have loving relationships because of the relationship he had with Fan and the relationship he has with Belle. And then he says, I'm sorry with all my heart. And there's a sense of pity there that he pity, he pities the miserable Scrooge. And he says, we've never, ever argued. And I'm going, I will I'll keep um, my Christmas humour to the last. So he's, he's always fun and upbeat, this Fred. And as I've just mentioned, he pities Scrooge. I mean to give him the same chance every year, whether he likes it or not, for I pity him. So he's always going to give Scrooge a chance to amend his ways. And I suppose, again, that's potentially the foreshadowing of the fact that he will, that Scrooge will redeem himself in the eyes of his family and in the eyes of the reader. I am sorry for him. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill whims himself always? This is in essence. So when when Fred asks this question, who suffers by his ill whims? And then he answers it himself, always. And again, look at your punctuation by Dickens there. Himself, pause, always. So we have this idea that even Fred and, and his family recognise that Scrooge is detrimental to himself. He hurts himself. He suffers himself because he excludes the family, because he doesn't want to join in, because he wants to isolate himself. Dickens' message is communicated, certainly here, and appears to, appears to be a critique on society, doesn't it? And, and obviously, potentially what's going to happen to you if you act or behave the way Scrooge does. 
Uh, Fan and Fred, so much like Fan, uh, Fred is also full of laughter. Scrooge's nephew reveled in another laugh. So again, you can do the verb reveled there, you know, that he's really fully, physically, emotionally, spiritually having fun and laughing. Um, and when we get the ghost of Christmas past and we realise that Scrooge used to be close to his sister Fan, because um, she remember she takes him home, doesn't she, from, from the school, we have this idea that there's a potential for him to have loving relationships because he's had them before. And I suppose that's potentially one of the reasons that Fred refuses to give up on him because he knows the potential he has. And this foreshadows the inevitable change in Scrooge at the end, whereby he wants to redeem himself and he wants Fred to let him in to the Christmas that's being celebrated. Uh, acceptance. He accepts, Fred accepts the transformed Scrooge and he doesn't doubt it, he doesn't question it. Um, perhaps he always knew apologies I've put a type and error there I've put new instead of K-N-A-W that is horrendous I am so sorry I do apologise it's my fault Neil's apologies um, perhaps he always knew there was good in Scrooge and then we get let him in it is a mercy he didn't shake his arm off look at that let him in with an exclamation mark it's like a plea isn't it let him in is also physically meaning let him into the Christmas and obviously um, beyond that it means let him into the family um I hope this has been useful in terms of the character of Fred and massive good luck in your English literature exam.